Welcome to this tutorial on designing a clinical study with an Oracle Clinical. In our last tutorial, we discussed about planning a clinical study using a plan subsystem where we uh, create programs or therapeutic areas, define the sponsors or organizational units, and then went on to define regions or geographical locations where the clinical study will be conducted. We then created a very basic version of a clinical study under a plan studies module. The design study module, uh, the design module of the Oracle Clinical Subsystem is used to add more information to what we've added so far in the plan studies module. Before we go ahead in the design subsystem and start designing a clinical study, we'll refer to the same sample protocol that we discussed and used for the process of planning a clinical study. We already uh, used the information on the first page of this protocol for planning a clinical study. We are now going to use the other information from this, uh, uh, from this protocol to design a clinical study and add more information to it. The protocol contains information about study design. So this is a double blind, placebo controlled, multi-center, multinational phase three clinical trial. And it, it is used to compare Kapaflox against placebo in patients suffering from gastric tumor. So one of the treatment arms is Kapaflox, the other one is placebo. The total duration of the study is 365 days, which is broken down into a screening period, a baseline period, a dosing period, and a completion period. So while designing a clinical study, we have to refer to this protocol and refer to primarily two sections, the study design section, as well as the study schedule section of the protocol, which talks about uh, the various time periods of the study, as well as the various visits in this clinical study. So let's go right ahead and design a clinical study from it. To design a clinical study, click on the design subsystem, then click on the studies module, and then click on the easy study design submodule. The easy study design is the simplest way to create a functional clinical study from a planned study with an Oracle clinical. So click on the easy stu study design submodule. By default, it will populate the last study that you have created with an Oracle Clinical. I like to create a new clinical study, so I'm going to insert a new record here. The form blanks out, now asking me to enter details about the clinical study. So as a, as a process of designing a clinical study using easy study design, you need to have a planned study in place. If you have not planned a clinical study before this using the planned subsystem, you need to go ahead and plan a clinical study first, and then only you will be able to design it. So we've already planned a clinical study in our previous session. I'm going to click on these three dots to get the list of planned studies already uh, planned within the plan subsystem. The one that we had planned was GSK001 underscore triple Z. I know this because I've used my initials at the end of it. So when you are doing your practical assignments, you could choose the one that you've planned uh, as, as a part of your plan studies module. So I'm going to choose the GSK001 underscore triple Z. This is the plan study. I'm going to select that. And I'm just going to tab out to go to the next tab. As you notice that all the basic information about the plan study, including the study title, the program or the therapeutic area, the project or the disease in question, the sponsor or the organizational unit, and the master country or where the clinical trial will be filed for regulatory approval, all that populates from the plan study itself. The only two things that I have to enter here are the version number of the clinical study and the maximum study duration. The version number of the clinical study always starts with version one. It, it rarely changes, but it will change in those circumstances where there's a major change to the protocol. And in cases there's a major change to the protocol, uh, where the data of the study may require to be collected again, then a new version of the clinical study will be created under which all the data for that version of the clinical study will be collected. So in case of major uh, changes to the protocol, a new version of the clinical study may be created, but typically the version will remain version one. The maximum study duration is picked from the study design section of the protocol. So it tells here, that the total duration of the study is 365 days. So we know that the units of, uh, of the maximum study duration is days and the maximum study duration itself is 
365 days. You have an option to set the patient replacement rule. The patient re replacement rule essentially means that you have the ability to replace patients in the middle of the clinical study. So let's say if your required sample size of the clinical study is 100 patients and you have enrolled 100 patients in your clinical study, but 25% of the patients drop out in the clinical study. So to meet the sample size, you will need to add another 25 patients to the clinical study. So will you be allowed to replace patients in the clinical study in between the visits? That is what the patient replacement rule chooses you to. In this case, for our clinical trial, patient replacement rule, uh, patients cannot be replaced in the middle of the clinical study. As you can notice in the protocol, it says patient replacement is not allowed in the middle of the trial. So patient replacement rule will be set to none over here. All right, so once you've done this and added the basic version of the clinical study and max study duration, Click on save to save this uh, clinical study. So now we designed a very basic version of our clinical study. And once we've done that, the first prompt that you would get is, does this study require second pass data entry? So at this stage, it will ask you that during the process of data entry for the data belonging to this clinical study, do you want to enter the data only once or do you want the data to be entered two times independently by uh, by two different data entry operators to maintain high quality of data. In most clinical studies, you require second pass data entry because it allows for a first level quality check of the data entered by the first pass operator. So I'm going to choose yes for this, which typically will be yes unless your study level procedures uh, say against it. So it's typically going to be yes to allow second pass data entry to be performed.